Uh, very warm welcome to you. Uh, we didn't have too many sessions on immersive media for our students. I think you know this is the first session, but I strongly feel that in today's age, digital age, when you know the new things are you know happening and newsrooms are also experimenting with the new technology, um, they should be exposed and they should be uh, you know introduced to this whole concept. And uh, that's why I felt that radio and television students, because you know they'll be joining, you know, uh, newsrooms, uh, television, and all. So they must be aware of, you know, what is happening in the industry, what are the new initiatives, and what are the new technologies which have come. And in fact, like uh, to all the students, you know, uh, my book, uh, he has actually written a chapter for that. Uh, like this will be published by Sage. It's quite a long time, but you know it takes a like, lot of time for the books to get published, and especially for the people like us, like who are holding you know uh, administrative responsibilities also. So sometimes it get delayed. Uh, but he has contributed a chapter for that also. So a very warm welcome, Clyde. Over to you now. Thank you, thank you, Doctor Anvati, for the welcome, and thanks everyone for thanks joining everyone. in. I. I thought I was going to do the thing for journalism students, but then I was told it was marketing and um, PR. So it's great to know that there's going to be a mix as well, probably a little bit of journalism and radio and TV as well as uh, advertising. So uh, generally, I mean, the topic that we've got is uh, food for thought in, um, in immersive media. And immersive media is applicable to all, all fronts, definitely advertising. Uh, journalism as well as uh, entertainment like film and uh, but uh, let's get started over the next hopefully two hours we'll try to take a break in between and um, then I could set up some stuff in the second half and we can do some practical stuff um, you know some practical applications in immersive media so with that out of the way let's uh, let's get started one of the things I like to ask people like and that's definitely ripped off from the matrix is uh, if you fall in virtual reality do you fall in real life let's let's, let's see if there's any truth to this um, to the statement <laughs> So, so yeah, as you can see, there's some powerful um, immersion in there, for lack of a better word, uh, that, that's possible with, with VR and with uh, immersive media. Now, depending on how you want to use it for advertising, uh, if or if it's like, for example, in PR or in, you know, uh, if you want to sway thought, um, these are some powerful emotions that you can play with, both psychologically as well as physiologically, as you can see, um, so that. That is what's possible with one aspect of immersive media, which is VR. So we've got immersive media covering different, uh, yeah, you know, anything that immerses a person inside the media versus the plain old um, linear way of absorbing media. So AR, augmented reality, we'll touch on a little bit later. VR, definitely. And even things like branching narratives. What I like, um, if you've seen the series Westworld, is what um, Sir Anthony Hopkins um, you know, explains, let him say it in his words. What is the point of it? You get a couple of cheap thrills, some surprises, but it's not enough. It's not about giving the guests what you think they want, but that simple. The titillation, horror, elation, the politics. The guests don't return for the obvious things we do, the garish things. They come back because of the subtleties, the details. They come back because they discover something they imagined no one had ever noticed before. Something they fall in love with. They're not looking for a story that tells them who they are. They already know who they are. They're here because they want a glimpse of who they could be. 
And I think that that final line is, is so apt for immersive media. It gives you the chance to connect with your audiences or to give your audiences a chance to, you know, to be something else. Uh, when you go to the movies, you know, it's always a form of escapism. Uh, that's true and that's great. So if you are planning something in, in media or in journalism, it's like in journalism, for example, giving people the chance to be in the shoes of the story or the, the, the subject that you are reporting. Uh, if it's in entertainment, it's easy. And today, advertising is moving away from simple logos, uh, you know, see how many logos. They're actually sponsoring stories or they're actually doing um, advertising that shows that the brand cares. And you know more than that about it than I do. Uh, but these are the platforms that let you do that then. So part two. Uh, this is a bit technical. It's for people who are in the broadcast or in the filmmaking industry when they're creating content, but it's also applicable for people who are commissioning it and, uh, you know, uh, the advertising uh, heads and creative heads. So a lot of relearning is happening when creating immersive media. For example, um, oops, I just went back by mistake. I should have played this. Just give me a minute. Yeah. So, you know, in normal filmmaking, they have something called rack focus, where you draw attention by zooming the camera into something in the back to gain focus, and then you pull back out. Now, stuff like this you cannot do in VR because you will physically cause people to get sick because they might be watching something in the foreground or in the background, and you decide that you want to go focus on that. So these are some no-nos in content creation and why you should pay attention to who you're hiring or the production company that you're hiring, not just anyone taking, you know, a, um, a 360 camera, putting it out there and calling it VR. And a lot of companies are doing that, actually, sadly. Also, another thing with audience engagement. Now, this is interesting because in the VR headset, if you put on a VR headset and soon even with AR glasses, probably, to a certain extent, because your head is being tracked, um, you can tell exactly where someone's watching, which part of the scene. So if it's like, let's say a brand uh, thing, or they're walking into a store and people are looking, um, let's say to the shoes or to the dresses section, you could over time case uh, judge or build a map of what works, what gains attention, uh, things like that. It can also be an ethics concern because you know exactly where a person was looking and at what content or what part of this, the, the, the content that they were looking at. So these are questions that uh, come up. In augmented reality, which is completely different from VR, we'll get into it in a question and answer session later. But uh, so in AR, you know, you're watching the real world. Uh, to some extent, uh, AR currently either uses your phone's camera or it uses, that's called video see-through AR, or you have these glasses which are still to come out yet which is, you know, just pass through and you're not using a camera. But if you're using a camera, you're actually mapping your whole surroundings. So when I show you a demo later, I would be turning the camera on, on my cell phone. And while it's fun, like in Snapchat or in Instagram, to see these characters moving around the place, you're also recording video of someone's private home. So these are ethics concerns and stuff that need to be taken into account. Three important things immersive storytellers should know. Show, don't tell is in any kind of thing, even when you're writing a book, it's show, don't tell. But in immersive media, it's even more truer. And I'll give you two examples and you tell me which works best, uh, space or by teleporting. But you will be walking on a, you know, in like in a virtual world, like in the Oasis from Ready Player One and you'll meet other people. So everything from trade shows to uh, going to the movies, everything is gonna be on this virtual platform that's coming out. And people will be, it's accelerated because of the pandemic that's happened. I think all these technologies have, are going to the forefront, including education. So for a brand storyteller, for a, uh, from, that, from that perspective, there's immense ideas that can be there because literally you're creating a physical, a uh, virtual copy of the real world online that people will walk. So story plus agency is equal to presence. Presence is that feeling that every immersive media project aims for to allow people to be there. 
as we get closer to well vr is one side and then they've got augmented reality which is um let's say if vr is a whole world built in in computer graphics ar is that same world with the with the walls removed and the sky removed so your actual real world is coming in along with digital characters around so how does that work for uh, let's see this video um, i call them surrogates digital surrogates because you'll be soon having holographic representations of yourself moving around Today we're going to show you an exciting new technology that could fundamentally change the way that people will communicate in the future. Imagine being able to virtually teleport from one space to another in real time. Oh, let me get out of your way again. I like you so much. I love you too. I'm home soon. I'll be home very soon. Bye bye. Now, in that example, we were demonstrating live 3D capture. But our system is capable of another thing. We can actually record and play back that entire session. Now, this is almost like reversing through time. And if I wear my HoloLens device, it's almost like walking into a living memory that I can see through another pair of eyes from all these different perspectives. And because this is 3D content, we can miniaturize it onto this coffee table and experience it in a more convenient manner. And this becomes a magical way of experiencing these live captured memories. Now imagine being able to teleport to any place with anyone at any time. And that's what holoportation is all about. Uh, so as advertisers, as policymakers, as uh, broadcasters, um, this is the, the tech that's coming, that's already here actually. This video was about a few years old now. And the HoloLens 2 is out. Apple is very soon releasing their AR glasses. And we all know once Apple does something, it goes mainstream. Um, so is Facebook. And um, even in India, Reliance Geo. So I don't exactly know which are the glasses that they've got, but they're actively developing content for it. And I think it's going to go free if I'm not mistaken, to people who have chosen one of the higher-end uh, geo packages. So things from, um, uh, you know, um, home cooking health videos to entertainment to YouTube videos to all the stuff you just be putting on your geo glasses. And that presents a big opportunity for advertisers to get in, for um, broadcasters to get in great content. And then that brings me to cinematic AR storytelling. So that's all coming up soon in uh, in a few minutes. But let's see what we've got. Krish se milne ke liye kuchhi ghanto mein Dan Mumbai mein hoga. Main khush thi ki main maa ki dekhbhal karte huye kuch samay bita paungi. Unhone hamesha kaha main swarg se unhi dekkar muskara rahi thi. Agar wo ye jaanti. So stories like this playing out in your, you know, in your living room, that's huge. That's, that's like a goldmine for, uh, for brand building, for creative content, even when it comes to immersive journalism, for telling stories that play out in your living room out there, people actually experiencing it. Because the context is familiar, it, you know, versus seeing it on, on a plain TV or even on a, a 3D video you can see your, your space out there. So the connection with the content, with the stories is very high. And these are the ideas that are being actively researched by let's say the USC, the University of Southern California. So worldwide is very few, uh, a handful of universities and research centers actually doing this out there, uh, much less mainstream curriculum. And that's why it's important that, you know, that institutions start looking at these ways of developing or revamping or upskilling uh, content creation in these uh, things as well as ideas, not just content creation. Uh, the ideas to use this um, in, you know, in advertising, in, in PR. Um, you can see how this can help in disaster management because if you have someone or a company spokesperson coming out there in your living room and speaking to you as a hologram, uh, 
chances are you would connect better or you would be influenced more to listen through and uh, you know and and, and get uh, influenced by what they're saying you know, why not uber cinemas with the kind of traffic jams that happen in uh, like in mumbai uh, you know rent out headsets and you could probably finish a whole movie uh, just doing a cross town uh, journey it's not quite there yet but yes it's getting there so you know people are watching and then geo glasses like i was telling you about so they are pr promoting it uh, big time right now with uh, asking for developers and uh, producing content and there's advertisers you know how would they how would that fit in that would be a conversation worth having with them so even as the institute as the institute itself maybe you should reach out to uh, geo and get some uh, get some insights on what is possible including for journalism as well as for advertising and uh, you know the, uh... so yeah that's that's something that's where it's heading with augmented reality and the whole aim is going to be like uh, like i said earlier um in the in the talk it's going to come down to glasses that you can literally pick up it's lying on your couch uh, you put them on and you'll be in it. snapchat already is has launched this to developers and it's definitely going to come out uh, pretty soon so those in social media and advertising using social media this is the next big thing that's coming up uh, it's going to be uh, you know ar facebook just spoke about this very recently so this is recorded live from my cell phone it's just a, it's an instagram filter so it works on instagram and they could just promote it and then click directly to rent it out i'm so glad that you're here It gets very lonely sometimes, you know, because I can't go outside at home. So, I'm going to... Did you hear that? So yeah, it's a filter. It works in about 4 MB. And for example, if uh, the brand or uh, publishes it, publishes it themselves, uh, then they have a, on Instagram you have a swipe up, and the swipe up can be a link to go subscribe or to to buy it. So it's an entertaining version versus just face filters. Awesome. So the agency that you get to, uh, probably you should be the change maker in there to to get this uh, worked out and done. uh yep these are some of the stuff that had, uh some of the projects that i've done is uh, at lab in abu dhabi and at google middle east i did a workshop for i think about seven or eight of their uh, google's uh, advertising partners from jwt to um bbdo and all of them uh, this was for broadcasters so you know make it in india Okay so let's let's take a break now should we take a break of uh, what um, 15 minutes 10 minutes what would you prefer yeah i think 15 minutes would be fine all right 15 minutes i'll right? get, it gets time for me i can set up some of the other gear so we can do some experiments absolutely absolutely thanks all right see you in 15 minutes